Hey everyone, for my last tutorial of 2016, I'm going to be creating a title sequence that was inspired by the recent Series of Unfortunate Events trailer. We're going to be using the Boris FX Extruded Text plugin in HitFilm. Now I have already done a tutorial on this effect before, so check it out if you haven't already. Some of the techniques that we're going to be covering will be similar, but practicing with the software will just make you that much more comfortable, and maybe you'll learn something new along the way. I'm Javert Valbar for InscapeDigital.com. Let's get started. I've created a new composite shot, and I have this grungy wallpaper that I made already in my timeline. It's made up of a repeating texture, which I tinted green and overlaid with a grunge picture. So I'll come over here to New Layer and select Plain. I'll add the extruded text effect onto it, and now we can begin customizing. To start, I'll go to the Controls panel and click this button for Launch UI Window. Let's go ahead and type the words Unfortunate Effects, and make the size 80. Then I'm going to select the letters in between the first and last, and decrease the size. This is how it's styled in the trailer, so I'm just matching it. I used the Futura Condensed Medium font, and I also centered it. After I hit Apply, you can see the text appear on screen now. Before we start customizing the appearance, let's go down to Letter Transformations and set the leading to negative 30 to bring the lines closer together. Now the first change I'll make up here is to check mark Use Comp Lights and Camera, and then I'll uncheck the built-in light. This was not possible in my last tutorial, and was added in with an update this previous year. I'll drop down the extrusion settings and set the depth to 4 and the bevel amount to 0.5. Then I'll set the bevel style to concave and change the material count to 2. Go ahead and add a light. I position mine about halfway down in the center and turn down the intensity to avoid bright white spots. The ambient color should be set to whatever the surrounding color is, so I'll make it a desaturated green. The diffuse color I'll set to a pale yellow. For the bump file, I use the Tiles Plexidome texture. I'll set the strength for it to 30, and decrease the X and Y scale by half. For the side material, I'll set the texture to Fossil Green to match the background. The bump file was Stone Old Concrete. Then add the Parallax filter to the text layer. I set the depth to about 5, and you can see this quickly adds the illusion of cracks and details. Now what really sells the idea that this text is big and blocky and real are the shadows. And instead of using the built-in controls for them, I'm actually going to use four drop shadow effects, which will give me full control. Let's go ahead and put those on now. The first effect is going to hug the text very closely, and not have too much blur. Now duplicate that effect. Increase the distance and blur, and slightly decrease the opacity. Then duplicate it again and do the same thing. And then one more time. The result is a very soft but deep range of shadows that gives the impression the text is right up against the wall. Let's go into the transformation controls for the layer and scoot it down slightly to make room for the new text. Then I can just copy this layer and rename it. I'll go into the UI window once again and type a series of, and make the font smaller. Then I'll move it back up using the same positioning controls as before. Because it's smaller, the bevel is going to be more prominent, so I have to reduce that. To make the text bend on screen, I'll come down to these checkboxes and checkmark Use Curl. This will make the properties for that effect appear below. I'll set the direction to left-right plus Z, then decrease the tightness and increase the amount. Then by keyframing angle 1, I can have it flip on screen from left to right. The cursive text at the top was created using the same techniques I covered in a previous tutorial on the neon path. Do watch that if you haven't already, it's a pretty fun effect. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Please do let me know if you have any questions. Before I sign off, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who has supported me and my content. 
2016 saw a significant increase in growth, both on my channel and website. This is mostly in part to the preset marketplace, which of course is supported by you guys, the users. I'm really looking forward to 2017 and the future of HitFilm. I hope I can continue to provide the community with educational and useful content, whether it's tutorials or lens flare packs or presets. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next tutorial.